Greetings. Just wanted to uh, say hi from the Great White North of Western Canada. You can see we've got uh, quite a bit of snow kicking around. We had a pretty good snowstorm about a week ago. Still kind of dealing with that. But uh, <clears throat> I felt inspired to uh, do a video. Came across a, a, a video yesterday by uh, Father Chalky and uh, him and some other people, <clears throat> maybe some other seen people from his community, they did a, a listening party or a listening comparison between uh, a number of amplifiers. One was the uh, CRV 3002, another one was a CK26, uh, I believe the model is, from uh, Elements Audio, and then uh, Finally, uh, an amplifier called the, the K30 coming from a Chinese company called maybe uh, Morin Audio, something like that, okay? And uh, I have to give credit to these, these people because they did a, a seemingly really good comparison. Um, you know, they weren't going for, you know, what's the maximum output of these amplifiers. They were listening to uh, what they sounded like, so they were more concerned about tone. Uh, you know, rather than, you know, just brute force kind of thing. And uh, they, you know, had a couple videos uploaded, one of the uh, listening session and then one of uh, sort of a, a wrap-up video talking about uh, what Father sort of <clears throat> thought about the, uh, the findings they came up with. Now, what caught my interest was uh, they made some comments in regards to the CVR 3002 amplifier that uh, <clears throat> there was a couple things they... Uh, uh, firstly, mentioned that the amplifier sort of heated up more than the uh, other two amplifiers. And then secondly, uh, they gave it, you know, really good praise for its uh, clarity and its, its actual sound when it came to sort of playing in the mid-highs. But they had some reservations about its performance in the uh, lower bass frequencies, you know, kind of below 50 hertz. They, uh, they felt like it uh, kind of fell off as far as volume was concerned and it didn't really, you know, give them the, you know, the sort of the bass pleasure that they were looking for in comparison to the, the other two amplifiers. <clears throat> and if you've been following that, that CVR amplifier, that's... <clears throat> almost like a bit of a some interesting information because it's been a, a fairly popular unit in different communities for its you know reasonable price and uh you know seemingly good performance you know value for the money kind of thing uh, as compared to you know it's been compared to you know amplifiers like the powersoft k10 and, and stuff like that so i happen to own one and I also have a, uh, a PowerSoft K10. So when I was watching this video, I was kind of like, oh, that's interesting. I, uh, you know, my personal experience with the amplifier was pretty good so far. I've only had it for a little while, but I, I did spend uh, <clears throat> sort of three days out in the woods this past summer with just a small handful of friends. You know, obviously the COVID thing has uh, put a bit of a quash on our gatherings and whatnot, but uh, we, we pounded a pair of those amps uh, three days straight listening to, you know, all kinds of music from, you know, rock to, you know, different types of electronic music, bass music, techno, side trance, uh, all kinds of stuff. And, you know, we, th we thought it sounded fantastic. And uh, I was using, it, uh, <coughs> using the amps on a, a pair of, uh, you know, we just had a, a little small rig. It was just kind of what I could pull out with my... Uh, my truck and my small trailer but we had a pair of uh paraflex subwoofers uh little shout out to the uh, high order quarter wave society fellas a uh, pair of uh, 15 inch paraflex sub subwoofers with a pair of sm60 f uh danley synergy horns and uh yeah we were stoked it's it's it sounded brilliant really and uh I had also dragged my PowerSoft K10 out and I did a couple AB listenings between the two amps and in, in all honesty I, I, I didn't I couldn't really hear a difference between the two of them they both seemed to sound clean they both sounded powerful they they dug deep both of them and uh, you know I was 
pretty stoked because I was like, wow, you know, for a, you know, a thousand bucks, basically, you can get an amp that has, you know, at least similar performance to the PowerSoft K10 that, you know, I picked up used and I, I still spent about $3,000 Canadian on it. So, you know, if you start looking at the uh, cost of doing, doing business, a guy could buy three of those CRV, CV, CVR uh, amps for the, you know, cost of one used PowerSoft amp. So, so like I said, uh, when I came across this video, I was like, hmm, that's interesting. Um, I wonder if I can maybe do a little bit of a better dig into this and, and really see what the difference is between that CVR amp and, and my PowerSoft. So I'm gonna take you guys inside here. I've kind of set up my uh, listening station and I've got a measurement mic uh, with uh, REW, so a room EQ wizard, kind of all set up, ready to go. And I'm gonna you know, do some subjective listening kind of comparisons as well as some measurements. So we can see if we can kind of figure out you know what's going on with this this CVR app. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna take in here. I'm gonna flip the camera around. Maybe no, no, it doesn't look like it. So here's uh, here's what we're looking at here. So this is a, a studio that we uh, own and manage uh, in Calgary, Alberta here. And uh, I've got my gear set up. I've got uh, Room EQ Wizard set up on my laptop. I'm running a, a drive rack uh, Venue 360 uh, DSP processor for my system. Uh, speakers I'm using, I've got a Danley SH46, my uh, favorite percept, uh, you know, possession in life. These things are beautiful speakers. And I've got two uh, Scram 21 inch subwoofers running uh, 20 uh, B and C 21 SW 152s. Uh, these subwoofers are designed by Josh Ritchie uh, from the database uh, website. These are, you know, one of his most recent designs, and we've been having really good luck with them. We've got six of these uh, to go with a pair of these SH46s, and honestly, they uh, they sound fantastic. They they dig deep, but they're also uh, very punchy, and they have a really nice attack. So for like house music and techno music and stuff like that, they you know they kick you right in the chest, but they can also, you know, dig down into the mid twenties with. Uh, pretty good authority all right so that's what i'm using for speakers i've got my uh mini dsb uh umic one microphone uh, hooked up into uh <coughs> um rew uh, i'll take you over and we'll look at uh my amp rack here this is just a part of the uh normal setup here but i you know kind of just threw it together for this uh testing so you can see i've got a uh my drive rack venue 360. I'm running a Crest Pro Light 75 uh, on the uh, Danleys, and I've got the 3002 CVR amplifier, and then the PowerSoft K10 amplifier set up down below. Okay, um, I am using a tractor as my sound source uh, for music listening, and I'm running that through a uh, Personas uh, sound card. And then that goes you know, directly into my uh, drive rack. But right now, uh, with using REW, I've just got a you know eighth inch out of my computer, you know, basically right here. And then that's just going directly into the back of my drive rack right now because I'm going to do some measurements first. All right. So coming around to the back of the amp rack here, um, first thing I wanted to sort of talk about here was this situation with the uh, the temperature. All right, now these amps have been running for probably about three hours now. Um, I just had them on sitting here idling. I've been doing some light testing, stuff like that, just uh, kind of dialing it in for this room. This uh, room is very reverberant. It's got uh, really reflective surfaces. So um, I spent a little bit of time just EQing it in such a way that I was getting a reasonably flat frequency response. Obviously, you know, accentuated in the base re uh, regions, you know, sort of like a house curve type of a setup. And uh, also got some sound deadening material. You know, I've kind of got some stuff stacked up against the 
back wall to prevent slap back because again this room's really echoey and then on the uh, sh46 there i've put another uh, sound deadening block just to keep the danley from you know shooting frequencies off the ceiling that's all cement in here so i just wanted it to, to sound as you know a little bit cleaner than it would uh, otherwise in this sort of echoey room all right so uh what we're going to take a look at uh first here is is this temperature situation all right now with these amps running for as you know a couple hours now uh you know this isn't scientific i'm you guys are gonna have to maybe take my word for this but uh if i reach in and you know just kind of put my hand on this this power soft unit and kind of feel around uh, the case of it kind of in this area right here there's there's a you know there's some temperature there you know i can definitely feel the warmth on my hand it's definitely not cold it's definitely got some warmth and you can feel that um you know i've had this amp for a couple of years and you know it's just what it does it's it, it's got some heat there and that's just kind of the way that it is all right now if i compare that to the cvr so i'm gonna you know just kind of get my hand in here I'm going to feel around on this in the, you know, sort of the middle of the casing. I can again, feel some heat there for sure. Like it's definitely got some temperature there. Um, but I'll be honest, it, it's, it's a little bit less than the K10. Uh, you know, again, I'm going to come across to the front here, all along the front of the body here. I don't feel, I don't feel any temperature at all. The, the, the steel is, you know, almost cold to the touch. Uh, but when I come around again to the back area, you know, sort of in this, this middle area right in here, I, I do feel some temperature for sure. There's some heat there. But if I had to say, you know, which one is warmer between the two of them, <clears throat> I would say that the power soft is slightly, not much, but a little bit. Okay. You know, I can compare this to, you know, this crest, Pro light, these things are cool. Like they don't make any heat at all. Like I can feel all the way around the case here. And it's, it's you know, there's a, the slightest amount of temperature there, but it's, it's, it's nothing, okay? But yeah, you know, on the temperature thing between the PowerSoft and the CVR, um, I would say that the CVR runs slightly cooler than that, all right? So let's, uh, let's wander over. Uh, I'm gonna give you an idea what, uh, what I've been doing here. <clears throat> I've got uh, REW set up uh, to do a, a frequency sweep just to see what kind of response I'm getting out of this. And, and like I said, I've, I've done a, a small amount of EQ on this um, just because of the reflections in this room, right? It's, uh, it's not an ideal room for here. But I just wanted to have it, you know, relatively flat. And as you can see, my measurement mic I've got it uh, on the floor and it's, it's fairly near field uh, to the subs because, you know, again, if I, if I pull it back further, I'm starting to pick up, you know, reflections in the room and it's, it's making the, the response look kind of nasty. So I'm keeping it close to the subs because that, that's what I want to measure, right? I want to see what's the, the, the true response coming out of these dual 21s so we can make a, a comparison from one amp to the other. All right, so I, I've currently got the, uh, the, the power soft plugged in. Okay, so just so you guys can kind of see what's going on, right? So I've got, you know, inputs in, I've got my cabling out and the cabling runs back to my subs there. So we're gonna do a, a frequency sweep on the, the power soft K10, you know, first, and we'll see what that looks like. All right, so I'm gonna open that up. Hopefully you guys can see this. Uh, just going to level check. Let's do a level check there. That looks okay. And then we're going to do the sweep. All right. So let's take a look at what we got here. And if we take a look in here, um, you can see we've got, you know, and again, guys, like, you know, in a reverberant room like this, uh, to get a, a perfectly flat response, you know, like what we would maybe like to see outdoors. Uh, it, it's not the ideal place to make measurements like that, but you know, all things considered, this is looking pretty good. Uh, you can see we've got good response, you know, basically down to about, 
well, let's call that like 26 or 27 hertz. And that sort of reflects the, the way that I've got my crossover set up uh, through the drive rack here. So take a quick look at this. <clears throat> All right, so you can kind of see I've got my, uh, my frequent high pass uh, set up at 28 hertz. Uh, kind of right here, I'm running a, a Butterworth uh, 24 dB uh, filter on there. So, you know, seeing the response on the uh, on REW there down to about 27 hertz, you know, sort of, it does reflect that. And, and pretty much, and I, I actually like running these subs a little higher than normal. I've got them crossed at uh, 110 hertz, uh, only because these things have such a just a really nice kick to them. So I, I like extending them a little bit higher than maybe other people might choose to do just to kind of capitalize on that, that nice punchy nature of these subwoofers. Um, you know, not that these uh, Danleys are no slouches either. Uh, they, they, you know, they can rip pretty hard in that, that kick zone, but uh, I do like uh, the sound of these subs right up to about 110 or so, but uh, you can see, you know, we've got a really nice response all the way up to, you know, right around 110. And then we start, you know, kind of falling off through the rest of the frequency uh, graph there. Okay. So that's, you know, let's just call that the uh, baseline for the, the Power, PowerSoft K10 response. All right. So I'm going to unplug it and I'm going to go and uh, plug in the <coughs> CVR now. All right. So I'm just going to quickly... Change these cables over. Kind of hot swapping these. It's probably not the best way to do it, but it is what it is for the moment. All right, so just gonna unplug this guy up here. Plug in that other cable. So now we'll have the uh, CVR up next. Now I am going to say something, uh, just so you guys know, if I, you know, look at the power soft versus the, the, the CVR there. Uh, when I first did these frequency sweeps, the CVR, uh, output actually is a bit hotter than the power soft. So I've turned down the, uh, dials on the CVR just slightly to match the volume. Uh, I used a, you know, <coughs> DB meter, you know, this guy right here, just to sort of balance uh, the output of both of them. So they're sort of even, uh, you know, just trying to keep things square for this, you know, it's a non-scientific test, but just wanted to let you guys know that. So let's uh, go back in here, get our measurement window ready to go. Check <laughs> That looks okay, and then here's the measurement. All right, so here's the CVR 3002 sweep. And you take a look at it, we're kind of right at the same spot, right around 26, 27 hertz. And it looks like we've got a very, you know, sort of a familiar output as compared to the PowerSoft K10 there. And I can you know, switch between the two here. Hopefully this will show up for you guys. So there's the PowerSoft, there's the CVR, PowerSoft, CVR, all right? So as far as, you know, at least, you know, measured frequency output between these two amps, uh, you know, through the processing that I've got set up uh, within the Venue 360, uh, we're getting basically identical responses between the two of them, okay? There doesn't seem to be any weird volume or output drop-off, you know, below 50 hertz, which was what was maybe kind of indicated in this video that we, you know, I mentioned before with uh, Father and his crew there. Um, now, you know, obviously I don't have the Elements Audio, you know, amplifier or the uh, K30 amplifier that these guys were comparing the 3002 to, but, uh, you know, 
as compared to the PowerSoft K10, you know, up until this point, uh, you know, I can't really see any sort of measured difference performance-wise between the two of them, all right? So, you know, as far as, you know, output goes, you know, I, I'm not confirming this drop-off in volume that they were talking about in their video. Um, you know, that doesn't, you know, take away the possibility that maybe the amp that they were using has an issue. Maybe, I don't know. I'm just, you know, kind of theorizing here. But uh, again, you know, in my experience of, you know, sort of three days this last summer kind of pounding on these amps and it, it uh, you know, I audibly, I, I honestly couldn't hear the difference between that CVR and, and the PowerSoft K10 uh, unit here. So uh, I'm going to pause the video here for now and I'm going to kind of unplug a couple things and get some music set up so I can do a couple sort of listening tests uh, between the All right, so I'm back. So what I'm gonna do for this little section here is uh, I've got a, a track loaded up. It's a FLAC file, so high quality, you know, uh, full res version of a track by Rob Sparks called Vagabondo. Um, I've also, I ran this track through an audio analyzer just to kind of see what the, uh, uh, what frequency realm the, the track, you know, sort of represents. And I'm going to play the track uh, through both amplifiers, the CVR and the, the PowerSoft, and we'll look at an RTA mic readout of it just to see that, uh, you can see how low the, the frequency response is in the track. And... We'll see if there's any difference between the PowerSoft and the in the CVR. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna start with the K10. I'll just walk around to the back here to show you guys that we're currently uh, plugged into the the PowerSoft. So I got you know inputs and outputs currently plugged into the PowerSoft there, and uh, I've got my RTA set up just the, using the one through the drive rack here. So it's got uh, you know the measurement mic set up there at the front. So we'll. Uh, let this track play and see what it looks like. So you can see that this track definitely has some frequency representation all the way down to uh, you know pretty much 20 hertz. It's maybe not as pronounced as it is in the in the 40 hertz region, but there's definitely content down there. And it's uh, you know out of my track collection, it, it's the one that always seems to you know when that track comes on, it, it rumbles hard and it goes deep. It's a you know it's got a really nice low end production on it. So. That was the power soft, so I'm going to switch it over and plug it into the CVR now. All right, so that's good back this up a little bit and then we'll So, I don't know, looks pretty similar to me. I don't think I really see any difference between the two of them. It seems like both amps is, uh, you know, kind of outputting the same frequency uh, results as, as each other, at least shown upon the, uh, the RTA mic setup. So, uh, so that's it for this point. Uh, I'm going to clear some space here, and I'm going to 
try and bring up uh, the volume of the system just to the point where my, my iPhone is going to start distorting the audio signal. So I'll, I'll try to get it as loud as possible without overloading the mic on the phone. And uh, I'll do a couple subjective sort of listening tests between the two amplifiers. All right, so I've kind of got the, the volume up to a point where if I uh, re-listen to it through some headphones, I'm not hearing the mic in my phone sort of distort. It's kind of just, just below the edge of that. And uh, we'll go through both amplifiers and see if we can hear any differences. Currently, I'm still uh, I'm plugged into the K10 right now. As you can see down here, inputs and outputs are, are plugged into the K10. And we'll, we'll listen to maybe about a minute of the track. So, um, again, I wish I could do this outdoors in the backyard or something because it definitely gives better results as far as listening pleasures go. But, uh, you know, obviously it's pretty... <laughs> snowy outside right now so we're gonna we're gonna have to deal with the indoor sound here so i'll get this going That was the power soft. Let's swap over to the CVR here. All right, so same thing. I'll back it up. We'll listen to the same, same portion of the track here for the same amount of time. So that's our AB listening test between the two amps. Um, in my opinion, you know, as I stated before, uh, there's no way that I could hear the difference between the two of them. You know, if I had somebody else here that would swap the amps and not tell me which was which, there's no, there's no way that I could tell the difference. They're, they're sounding identical, in my opinion. But uh, yeah, I, I think maybe I'll try and dig up one other track and we'll do one more listening and then uh, maybe wrap it up from there okay so i loaded up another track uh, this one's uh by deadbeat called uh, rise again featuring paul saint hilaire uh, an another a bit of an older track but uh when i run this through the rta it looks like it even has a little bit more 
deep content in that you know 30 to 20 hertz range so i'm just going to let it play here it'll show the rta measurement here <laughs> Okay, so you can see it's definitely got uh, some meat down there. So um, we'll do our one minute subjective listening test again. Um, we're gonna start this time with the CVR. So you see I'm still plugged into the CVR. So we'll uh, give this a go. And let's see if we can uh, hear anything. <laughs> CVR, let me swap over here. All right, so back, uh, back plugged into the K10 there. We'll listen to the same part of the track. Again. the uh that was the cbr playing there and again guys I, I, i'm not hearing any any difference one amp to the other so uh i'm just gonna do a couple things here and then maybe do like a little bit of a wrap up all right so wanting to sort of i guess just sort of wrap up this little you know, obviously not scientific, you know, test, but, you know, hopefully, or, you know, I hope some people might appreciate, you know, seeing some, at least some measurement data uh, on top of some, you know, subjective, you know, opinions and, you know, maybe a little bit of listening comparisons between these two amplifiers. Um, you know, I, I I wish I had a, you know, a better mic to be able to to listen to it in such a way that it might come across in the recorded audio better. But uh, you know, I'll be really honest. The, the, this room is it's like almost a worst case scenario for listening. Anyways, <clears throat> I'm sure you guys can hear the echo just in my voice in the room. So, um, you know, I think you know at, at a reasonable volume with a near field mic, you know, it, it's going to be, it is just what it is, right? So, um, see what happens maybe this summer when it's nice out again. And, uh, if we're not, 
back to music events and stuff like that i'll maybe try and do another one of these uh, outdoors i've got a, a large yard which would be you know infinitely better for doing this but um under the circumstances and, and you know and i want to give a you know some respect and a shout out to to father for his video <clears throat> with his crew because uh you know i think there's been a lot of <clears throat> sort of you know mystery and and hearsay uh surrounding these cvr amps and i think that you know what they did was was kind of a, a really well thought out and excellent comparison test and um you know i'm giving you thanks for you know inspiring me to get out of my house i mean we're the city I'm in is, is we're pretty much like the worst place in Canada as far as uh, infection rates and stuff goes. So I've been sitting around my house for way too long not doing anything. So thank you for inspiring me to get out and do something productive with my time today. So it was fun, you know, firing up the, the gear. It's been a while since last time I had it, uh, you know, even out of the storage locker was in August. So... Father, thank you very much for, you know, inspiring me to, to get my ass out of the house and do something with my life. So that felt really good. So mad respect to you. And uh, I hope you and your loved ones are doing well. And by all means, I, I I'm definitely didn't want to, you know, with what I did today, try to come across as challenging your guys' findings. That's not it, it at all. I just, you know, I wanted to offer a couple more data points for other people to, you know, make decisions upon, you know, whether they're considering grabbing, you know, one of these amps. Um, you know, I think the, the, the CVR for what it is, you know, at least when you're comparing it against the PowerSoft K10, uh, it, it's a hell of an amp you know, for what it is. I mean, is it is it less of an amp than the K30 or is it less than an amp of the Elements Audio one? I mean, I'm not, I'm not willing to say because I don't have the ability to compare those two, all right? Now, what I will say is I, I think, you know, obviously the PowerSoft has a, a, a pretty well-known reputation, um, but, you know, there are some some you know critiques that people talk about with this amp it, it it's uh brutally clean you know with with low end output or i mean with all of the output when you're using it on subs the the signal that comes out of your speakers is incredibly clean and, and in some ways you know if you compared that you know if I'm using my subs as an example if i stack up my subs next to a, a couple double eighteens or something like that. I think just the, uh, the natural tendency of a double eighteen to, you know, induce some distortion into its output, you know, gives that bass sound, uh, you know, potentially a little bit more feel, you know, or a little bit more, um, tactile kind of, uh, you know, feeling, whereas the, um, you know, if you're looking at like a horn loaded sub or, you know, I mean, these scram subwoofers, they're, they're kind of a hybrid. They're, they're short horn loaded in the kind of upper frequency range and then bandpass loaded in the lower frequency range. So they're kind of like a, they're a bit of an in-between. They, they, they give a really nice low sub sound, but then they benefit from the short horn loading uh, uh in the kick range so you know it's um but it is a very clean sounding sub like the 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 driver is buried deep within the sub and you know if you put them side by side with some double 18s you know at, at first you might you know think you know wow those double 18s they sound a little bit more gnarly or a little bit more you know kind of like there's a visceral feeling to that but i mean i think that's you're listening to the you know just the inherent you know, bits of distortion that's, um, you know, common with a front radiating speaker like that, right? So um, my personal tastes, you know, the music that I like to listen to, I, I like things to sound very clean and, and defined. And, and for my purposes, I think that PowerSoft amp is, is a good fit for my purposes. So, um, 
uh, that might factor into people's decision, right? If, if those other amps are maybe adding a little bit of distortion to give it that little bit more of a warmer sound uh, than the, you know, and I've heard it, you know, PowerSoft amps be described as clinical, right? Like they're just, they're, they're so clean almost to a fault. So maybe that's what you guys are hearing a little bit, right? So, um, but, you know, if you feel that a PowerSoft amp is your thing and you feel like it's a quality amp, um, I don't think you're going to have a problem with these CVR amps. I think you'll, you'll quite enjoy them, especially for the cost. You know, I think like, I think they're even on sale right now. Like they're like 698 bucks or something like that, US dollars. Man, you can get a lot of performance out of a thousand bucks. I mean, I'm talking Canadian dollars because I'm in Canada, right? So... Um, yeah, so, yeah, respect to you guys for uh, inspiring me to get out and make some measurements, and uh, hopefully this is helpful for anybody out there who's, you know, maybe on the fence of a purchase decision. I mean, for me, I've been eyeing up those those Element Audio amps as well, but, you know, they're, they're big and heavy, you know, and I'm... I, I, you know, my back isn't what it used to be. I don't like hauling around massive racks of heavy gear. So uh, not saying that a PowerSoft is much lighter, but it's it's 15 or 20 pounds lighter than that Elements audio amp. So if you're running a, a rack and, you know, I'm typically running three amps on subs and then a, a pair of amps on tops because I usually buy amp those Danleys. So all those pounds start to add up. So... You know, I've, I've played around with the really lightweight amps, like these Crest Pro Lights, and I'll be honest, man, they sound pretty darn good on, on the subs, but after I got that PowerSoft, I was like, yeah, no, they're not, they're not there yet. So I don't think the, we're not in the, in the reality of 15-pound of 15 pound, 15 pound subwoofer amps yet. You know, maybe some of them are getting close, but, uh, you know, things like the CVR and the PowerSofts and, you know, maybe this K30, you know, stuff like that probably do you just fine. So, uh, you know, your guys' results, I'm not trying to uh, discredit them. I'm just giving you guys uh, a couple more points to look at uh, for consideration. So that's it for me. Thanks, guys. And, uh, you know, hopefully uh, in the near future, the world will turn a corner and we can get back onto some dance floors again. Cheers.